हे स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू सो टुडे वी आर गोन टॉक अबाउट क्वांटम नंबर्स सो फर्स्टली लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट दीज क्वांटम नंबर्स आर सो द पोजीशन ऑफ ईच इलेक्ट्रॉन इज डिस्क्राइब्ड बाय अ सेट ऑफ फोर नंबर्स व्हिच आर प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर द एंगुलर मोमेंटम क्वांटम नंबर व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड अजीमुथल क्वांटम नंबर एंड द मैग्नेटिक क्वांटम नंबर and despite of these one more additional quantum number was introduced for accounting some special behaviors of an electron which is spin quantum number let's understand that what these quantum numbers are so the first one is principal quantum number so the principal quantum number is related to the size and energy of the main cell and this principal quantum number of an orbital is denoted by the letter small n and it can have any integral value except zero and these integral values increase due to the increase in the size and energy of the main cell in an atom like for example you already know that four nearest orbitals from the nucleus are represented by k l m and n in which k is the nearest orbital l is the second nearest orbital m is the third nearest and n is the fourth nearest orbital from the nucleus so now in this case the principal quantum number of k shell will be n equal to 1 because it is the nearest shell to the nucleus so its energy will be the lowest amongst all of others then similarly for l shell it will be n equal to 2 then for m shell it will be n equal to 3 and for n shell it will be n equal to 4 and so on and these values are only called the principal quantum number of different shells understood okay so now let's move to the second quantum number so the second quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number which is also called the azimuthal quantum number so this quantum number identifies the number of subshells and shape of the orbital so you already know that the subshells of the main shell is denoted by s p d and f so now how we can find the number of subshells in the main shell so for example if we take the first shell which quantum number is n equal to 1 then it will contain a single subshell which is 1s and similarly if it is the second shell which has the value of second principal quantum number then it will contain two subshells which are 2s and 2p and in the third main shell the subshells are 3s 3p and 3d and in the fourth main shell it will be 4s 4p 4d and 4f and in these values the first number is the principal quantum number and the second value is the azimuthal quantum number now here the angular momentum quantum number is denoted by small l and the values of angular momentum quantum number of these subshells will be range between 0 to n minus 1 means for all the s subshells its value will be 0 and for p subshells its value will be 1 for d subshell its value will be 2 and for f subshell its value will be 3 so now these are the shapes of those subshells you can see these pictures for understanding their structures more clearly okay got it okay so now let's move to the next quantum number which is the magnetic quantum number So this quantum number tells us about the orientation of the orbitals in the subshell means what can be the possible orientations of the orbitals in a subshell this quantum number identifies that only and this magnetic quantum number have integral values of between minus l to plus l including zero also now here is a formula which is 2l plus 1 through which we can find the number of orbitals in the subshell so for example if we take a subshell let's say we take 3p now what will be the azimuthal quantum number of 3p subshell so of course it will be 1 so now if we apply this value to this formula then after solving its answer will be 3 which will be the number of orbitals in the subshell and by using this formula you can find all subshell orbital values okay so now here is a table 
and in this table you can see that each subshell holds as many electrons as the number of orbitals in the subshell. Now after this one more table is here which shows that how much the maximum number of electrons that can be occupied by different subshells. Okay, understood? Okay, so now let's move to the next quantum number which is the spin quantum number. So this quantum number describes the orientation of the electron spin in the space. Means simply the electron is rotating clockwise or anticlockwise. This is only referred by this spin quantum number. Now if an electron is rotating clockwise then its spin quantum number will be plus 1 by 2. And if it is rotating anticlockwise then its spin quantum number will be minus 1 by 2. Okay, got it? Okay. 